Recently, our friends over at Lexum Press sent me some resources to check out and see if there were any that I might want to talk about on the channel. And I wanted to make a short video just to highlight a couple that I think are really cool, especially for parents or those of you that work with kids. We've reviewed other kids-focused Bible resources here on the channel, and uh, they've been a mixed bag. Some have been okay. Some have been ones I would not recommend. I want to share some that I absolutely recommend. I think these are awesome. These are the Fat Cat books by Lexum Press. And they're called Fat Cat because the character Fat Cat in the books is a nod to the catechism. Now, catechism is uh, how you train people in the faith. It's a series of teachings. And so these are meant to be catechisms for kids. And so Fat Cat is the symbol of the catechism. Pretty clever. And I want to show you these. They sent me this one. And since Easter, it is Holy Week this week. Uh, I wanted to look at the King of Easter. Jesus searches for all God's children. And then they also sent me the Ten Commandments for all God's children and a coloring book, the Ten Commandments coloring book that goes with the Ten Commandments volume. So let's take a look at these and I'll give you some quick thoughts. So here is the King of Easter. And the, the art is by Natasha Kennedy. And the text is by Todd R. Haynes. So you open it up, really beautiful. This is, I really like this, very colorful, stylistic. This actually reminds me of the opening uh, tapestry in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, if you've ever seen that uh, pre-Studio Ghibli Hayao Miyazaki film. If you haven't, you need to see it, it's fantastic. But this made me immediately think of that tapestry that opens that movie. So you open it up and there's a prayer to Jesus on the first page. And then there's an explanation of what is Fat Cat. And so they say, Fat Cat is our way of making the catechism approachable. He represents the catechism, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. In this book, Fat Cat guides us through the truth we celebrate on the holy day of Easter. Our Lord and King Jesus seeks and saves the lost. He brings the lost out of death and darkness into life and light. He speaks his word and delivers them from destruction. And today that's still true. In his word, Jesus brings himself to us, his life, his salvation, his forgiveness. From his birth to his death to his resurrection and beyond, Jesus seeks and saves the lost. And then they say, Fat Cat is hidden throughout the pages of this book. Search for him with your child as you enjoy this book together and hide the truth of Jesus in your heart. The man on the cross is the God who was born of a virgin. Wherever his name and word are, you will find him with his life, salvation, and forgiveness for you. Happy Easter to all God's children. And then a quote from Malachi 4.2, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And so this is a children's book. It's very simple, very colorful. It just begins. Jesus is the king of Easter. He finds who is lost, who is lost, he saves. And so there's this table and there's two nameplates so far, Jesus and Fat Cat. <laughs> so Fat Cat's pretty easy to find in this one. At the end, this table is going to be full, which which is pretty cool. So you've got Jesus and Mary, and I won't read all these because I obviously I want you to check out the book for yourself, but I do want to give you a sense of what's in here. Uh, the stories, it doesn't really cover stories. It just talks about different characters in, that Jesus sought and saved. Some who were didn't seem like they needed saving, you know, people who were already on the right track. But of course, theologically, Jesus was their savior as well. And then some who looked impossible to save and that Jesus was their savior too. So each page is a different character. And again, you gotta find Fat Cat and other little animals that are hiding throughout. But you have Jesus and Mary, Simeon and Anna in the temple, John the Baptist, there's Fat Cat over there hiding, watching, Matthew the tax collector, the little children, blind Bartimaeus, Zacchaeus, Lazarus. One of the things I like about this, one, Jesus is clearly not Caucasian in this. That's really important. There's been centuries of European Caucasian Jesuses that have permeated pop culture. And it's one, it's just anachronistic, but two, it takes Jesus out of the realm of the ancient Near East, out of the realm of first century Galilean peasant. And so picturing him as a darker skinned, Middle Eastern looking person, I am all for that in depictions of Jesus. But I do like that all of the people are represented in 
different shades of brown, so to speak. So it's not like you've got like sub-Saharan Africans and Nordic Europeans and East Asians and Aborigine. It's not that. I mean, everybody looks kind of like somebody you might see if you went throughout the Middle East today, because people in the Middle East range from fairer skin to darker skin. But it's just cool that all are kind of represented. It, it definitely decaucasiasizes. That's not a word, but I'm just going to coin it. Now, it, it takes Jesus out of that blonde, blue-eyed European, but it does so in a way that also presents the universality of the people that Jesus came to seek and to save. So I think this is great. Some people may not like it. They may want their, their traditional white Jesus, but too bad. That's not what Jesus was, biblically speaking. So this is much closer to it, and I think it's great. It's definitely a step in the right direction in terms of depictions of Jesus in children's artwork. And then you have Jesus and Mary and Martha. You have Jesus and the thief on the cross. And they even got the text on the sign that hung above Jesus correct. It's in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Jesus and the centurion at the cross. And then this comes from the, the Orthodox and wider church tradition of the harrowing of hell. You have Jesus going and saving uh, Adam and Eve, who are depicted as an a old man and an old woman. This is a tradition within, particularly in orthodoxy, but the idea of Jesus also being the savior of the Old Testament saints is very much a biblical notion. So it's cool to see that put in here. And then the middle of the book, today salvation has come to this house. So then Jesus and Mary Magdalene after his resurrection, and, and you can see his crowd is growing throughout the book. Jesus and the travelers on the road to Emmaus. Jesus and Doubting Thomas, Jesus and Peter at the reinstating on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus and his enemy, Saul. And then at the end, and you, did the King of Easter find and save you? Yes. So now that table that Fat Cat and Jesus were sitting at at the beginning is full of all of the people who Jesus has saved. And then at the end, there's a list that says, find Jesus and his friends. And so these are all of the people you can look for throughout the book. And it gives scripture references by each one. So you can read more about them or read to your children more about them in the Bible, including these animal characters, Wormy, Knock Knock, Faux Cat, and Fudge. And these are Psalm 145, 14 through 17, which talks about God caring for all the creatures. So I just think this is great. I love this. This would be so much fun to read with your small children. And, and they're learning the story as they grow. That It's becoming part of who they are. At the end, there's a note that says families are little churches. And it talks about how you can do this. You can read this book. And then you can go through some of this stuff in the back with your family as like a little church service, which is what family catechism used to be during the time of the Reformation. I mean, people like Martin Luther and others, that's when they would do their teaching. And that harkens back to the Old Testament. In the Torah, it says, teach these things to your children. When you're sitting, when you're lying down, when you're going out, when you're walking, when you're around the table and your children ask you, why is this night different than the other night? You know, Passover, all of these Hebrew concepts were ingrained not in Sunday school classes or Sabbath school classes during the Old Testament, but around the dinner table. They were ingrained by family. The primary teacher of children was to be the mother and the father. So I, I think this is great. I love this. There's a prayer at the end, an Easter prayer that you can pray and respond. So it's a little bit liturgical and there's scripture references for each response. Then there's the Apostles' Creed. So you can say this together, which is wonderful. I grew up Methodist, so I, we said the Apostles' Creed every Sunday. And I'm really thankful that I can say the Apostles' Creed by heart without even thinking about it. It's just become part of who I am. That's really cool to see that in a children's book. Then there's a prayer that parents can lead their children in praying if they want to. And then there's a note to parents about some of the different characters and, and the illustration choices that they've made throughout. But it emphasizes the main point of the book. That's the story of Easter. On Easter Sunday, King Jesus rose from the grave, defeating sin, death, and the devil, and bringing us forgiveness, life, and salvation. And it quotes Isaiah 9, 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. Easter celebrates Jesus putting death to death, bringing us out of darkness into light, and giving us true life. God's word brings us Jesus. Jesus brings us good news. Wherever his name and word are, you will find him. 
with his life, salvation, and forgiveness for you. As he promises Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house. And so you even have like a, a, a daddy fat cat and a mommy fat cat reading to the little fat kittens there. It's really cute. And then a little information at the back about Lexham Press, and that's it. Now, the Ten Commandments, uh, artwork, purpose, the approach is very similar. Opens with another cool tapestry. Talks about who is Fat Cat. There's a prayer at the beginning. And then each of the commandments, what they've done, this because this is Christian view of the Ten Commandments. So they center each of the commandments around something having to do with Jesus. They go through all ten. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Here is the depiction of the nativity and the people coming and worshiping Jesus, which has incredible theological implications. You know, you are not to worship anyone else. This is Hebrew Bible, Israelite religion 101. And yet, in the New Testament, people worship Jesus. So, that leaves us with two choices. Either followers of Jesus were rank heretics and were right to be put out of the synagogues, or Jesus somehow is, in some way that we cannot fully explain, Emmanuel, God with us. And worshiping him is not a violation of the second commandment because he is God in the flesh. Those are the two choices that the New Testament leaves us with. Obviously, this takes the second rather than the first, but that's the rationale behind some of these illustrations. You should not make for yourself an idol, and there's a picture of the crucifixion, so this would bring up a discussion of what's the difference between idolatry and religious iconography, and that's something that parents should have with their children. You should not misuse the name of your Lord, your God, in vain. You have Jesus being baptized, and when Jesus is baptized, he's called God's beloved son, and then when Jesus sends people to baptize, he sends them to baptize in the name, singular, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So knowing the theological underpinning of some of these concepts helps make sense of which illustrations were chosen for which commandment. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, honor your father and your mother. This is the event where Jesus was in the temple. You shall not murder, and there's an illustration of the Good Samaritan parable. You shall not commit adultery. This is at the wedding at Cana. The prohibition against adultery was predicated upon the sanctity and the holiness of marriage, which is what Jesus' first miracle validated. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Here is the boy that brings Jesus the fish and the loaves in an act of supreme generosity, which Jesus then multiplies to feed everyone. I mean, just, just discussing with your kids why the illustrations were picked for which specific Old Testament commandment, I think is a great theological exercise for you as an adult. And so then it ends with a culmination of, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And just as Moses led the people through the waters of the Red Sea, Jesus leads his people out of captivity to sin through his life, death, resurrection, sinning of the Holy Spirit and baptism. There's a lot of deep themes here that you could tie together. And then it ends with a big amen. Uh, literally, here's the Hebrew word aman, which is where we get amen from. And Characters are sort of dancing around the Hebrew letters. I don't know if you can see that on the camera very well or not. Aleph, Mem, Nun. Then there's a note again about families being little churches. There's a family prayer. Then there's the Ten Commandments that they can repeat and learn. Then another suggested prayer that parents can lead children in. Then there's a note to parents about the Ten Commandments. They talk about how different traditions number the commandments differently. There are different traditions break the commandments up different ways. And, and this kind of goes over a little bit of that. But then there are passages in Scripture where we find the commandments and New Testament nods to those commandments. And the coloring book is basically these illustrations, but without color. So there's a note about Fat Cat at the beginning. Then there's some little hidden things that you can look for and find throughout as you're coloring. And then the illustrations, again, these are like, like vector-based line art versions of the full color ones. But there's the text of each commandment and then passages where that commandment is talked about in scripture. And yeah, that's it. It's a standard coloring book. At the end, there's a place where they can draw their own prayer. What are you thankful for? What are you afraid of? What do you want to tell God? You can 
actually draw that or write it out here. A few more passages, and then just a fun page with all of the animals of God's creation at the end. And you can see the other books in this series that Lexham has available. I've only gotten to look at King of Easter and the Ten Commandments, but there's also the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the King of Christmas. So I love these. I think these are fantastic. I don't have kids. If I did, I would absolutely use these with them. This is the kind of thing I think we need more of. It's theologically rich. It's culturally sensitive. It's biblically accurate. It takes into account church history and wider tradition, but it does it all through these very engaging and beautifully illustrated children's books. So these, I give these an A+. Plus. Go to Lexham. I'm not getting any money for this. I mean, Lexham did send me these copies. So technically, I have to say that this video is a paid promotion because they gave me these copies to look at. But that's all they gave me. This is There's no deal here. I think these are great resources. Disciple Dojo exists to help equip you with great biblical resources for all ranges of learning. I think these are it. So I'll put a link in the video description to where you can buy these, check them out for yourself. I think they make a great gift. I think if you uh, are in charge of a children's ministry, if you run a Christian daycare, or if, if you're in a homeschooling group, uh, or if you're just a pastor that wants something for your children's Sunday school classes, check these out. These are well worth it. So Disciple Dojo, big fan of the Fat Cat series. I think these are awesome. Good job, Lexum Press. Those are my honest thoughts. If you've used these, if you have these and you want to share yours in the comments below, feel free to. If you have other really good theologically rich resources that are suitable for children, leave those in the comments as well so that people can find out about more good stuff out there. If you're going to leave some dumb comment like, just read them the Bible, like not helpful. Don't leave comments like that. That does nobody any good. I mean, it does me good because it's engagement and it helps us with the algorithm. But that's a silly comment. Kids need kid-focused resources and imaginative ways to put scripture within their grasp in a way that they can understand it. And so Lexham has done a fantastic job with these. And there's other stuff out there, I'm sure. I just want to highlight the good as I come across it. And these are definitely the good. So that's all for now. Stay tuned for more here at Disciple Dojo. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, would love for you to do that when you do it click that notifications icon. That really helps us out more than you know. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. As always, keep training.